Guys, I'm down here, Angler's Paradise, in Devon, deepest Devon. It's very, very windy. As you can see by the ripples out there. I'm on a lake, I've never been here before. Uh, Zena Gregory sent me here. Middle lake, she said, give it a go, Graham. I'm basically just gonna do an overnighter. I've never done an overnighter down here before. Coming here out the wind, actually. And it's called, I think it's one's Angler's El Dorado. There's no names on these lakes. On their main Angler's Paradise place, they have got names, so you can, uh, uh, you know, check with the lakes. This is one is carp and catfish lakes. That's down there, and I know that's where the big catfish are. Guess it's full of anglers. It's rammed. This has just got carp and catfish, but it's a middle lake. Then they've got another one called Golden Tension, Golden Wolf up there. Guy was pole fishing up there. <clears throat> that always catching. But of course, you can do day tickets here, um, as I understand it. Always check as things change. And you can stay in the accommodation, which is really nice accommodation with a bar as well. Hopefully get to show you the bar. Should be showing myself the bar tonight, shouldn't I? Anyhow, I'm going to go I throw out. I'm basically staying overnight so I can film for Golden North tomorrow. And I can obviously <clears throat> stay in an accommodation. But this is the sort of place, if you're going to stay, stay in a bivvy, baits in the water, you never know. Chances I'll be blank. I realise that. But I've put some uh, bait out there. Just here, just over there, around that edge of the island, the bay. I've got here the weight. I've got my, um, well, you know what it's going to be. It's the old Pacific Tuna 18mm hard hook bait. I've got some other baits here I'll show you in a minute. I'm using, for loose feed, one of these Tobber Manor packs. I don't know what size they are, actually. A bit, a bit smaller, would it be 15mm or something like that? Whatever, you know me and boilies. They just get thrown in the water. I've made up little PVA stockings here. Okay. Uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. There's about ten there. Very short cast. Can be tricky at night. Because obviously with this big weight, um, I don't want to go up the tree. So I'm going to have to, if anything, drop it short. And then hope I draw the fish away. Fingers crossed. Let's get these two out there. The other thing I'd do is get some bread. Because the wind is blowing this way, I've got to stay in the shelter of this to be able to talk to you. You can see it's blowing right to left. I want to go up in the bay there and uh, catapult some bread because there's a nice windless place up there and they might drift down here and they might, might get a chance of a fish uh, showing itself on the surface. Some people say don't hook. There's the boilie, guys. You can see that. Look. There's the boilie. They say don't hook it right through the knot. So I just go, in case it leaves a residue of PVA on the point of the hook. These are the real fanatics. It's not me, but I did take that into consideration. I've just gone down from the knot there, if you can see that. I always double check that that's just, just lightly nipped in there. This is a safe rig, so look, it pops free. Should a carp break off, which on 18 pound line, one hopes it doesn't. That it might even be 20. Let's get it out there. Now, I'm going to have to lay this one down to cast it. I want to make sure I'm all clear. All right. I'm just trying to go in that bay over there. A little bit short, but it's going to stay there. Let them find it. I don't know the bottom here, so I've sunk the line straight away. I do not want to pull it, bump it, twitch it, anything. I just want the line sunk. I'm going for it. Sound like a carp under there. I've been chucking some bread out as well. Tidying up as best possible. Oh, 
fancy putting that there, Gordon. How stupid is that? The other thing I find annoying is that little piece there. It's going to twitch all night, setting the buzzer off. I'm clipped in there. Christ. And then they're going to hear that one back at Angler's Paradise, I should think. I'm going to have everybody up tonight if it gets busy. <laughs> On that lake over there. They've all got those radio controlled infrared interceptor or whatever type of alarms. I'm old school, got batteries in there. Old batteries. I do like these. These are a good idea on these bivvies, look. You want to lay your rod down, you just walk on it. If you put it up like that, you can fold it over. It keeps your rod out of the way. Just run down. There's my rig, you see. Just pinched in. One boardy. Now, I had some big, I don't know where I put them, um, halibut pellets. I was going to use those, and I thought, you know, I can't be bothered to try it for the catfish. I can catch catfish up my way. Pond wooden places. So... This one is a super long distance carp rod. I'm going to be fishing this one, if I can get it, slightly to the left of that point of that island. I did bait up there. That is so on the money. Probably killed three carp then. Sink it straight away. Quite a heavy duty drag. So this one, I know I can fish just past the island. Yeah, I can fish that one just past the island on the edge. I've got those. I've got those quite short for drop backs. And also the fact that I don't want anything going in there. You know, I did talk to a guy who's up here and he lost a couple of fish in the bushes, he said. The other thing you've got to do, guys, is make sure your landing net is on the left hand side of the swim, facing that angle like that. You think I'm joking? Right, this is a bomb site. And I have to sort out in here somewhere. Oh, I was going to show you the other baits. I've got to put some loose feed out of there anyway. I've got the old, what are these, six mils in PC, Pacific Tuna, six mils. More six mils. Tomorrow I'm going to try a golden wolf and tension stuff like that. Um, that's really why I'm staying overnight. I'm not staying overnight for the carp, really. I'm staying overnight because I've got to stay somewhere to get up uh, in the morning. I've got some of these. These are fruity tuners. Somebody tell me if they're any good. They're going in the water. And these ones, because I'm fishing with Pacific tuners, I thought I've got to keep the fishy flavour going, you know. And um, so I'm using spicy crabs. People ask what size. I don't know. Why ask me all these things? Technical things with boilies, you know I don't know. They get catapult thrown in the water. So hook bait is the old packed pack tea, I'm gonna call it, Pacific tuna. And loose feed's gonna be some of these kiddies. I'm just gonna mix and match. Out there. As I say, I don't know really what I'm doing. I'm just throwing two carp rods out. That's what I'm doing. I might get lucky, I might not. Oh, these, I'll tell you what. These ones smell. What are they? Manoffy pie, fruity tuna. They, they, that's a oh, nice smell. My wife could make my sandwiches out of that, to be honest. 
What I did do, I'm going to do before it, just as it gets dark, probably just for 10 on the recast those. I'm going to dip them both in this oak stuff. It's a liquid additive of PC. It stinks. You do not want it on your fingers. It takes days to get it off, but it does attract fish. And that's the other ones I've got. Marine halibut pre-drilled. Well, I was going to do it for catfish. I think, yeah, I just fish. I just fish boilies. I mean, catfish eat boilies. I know they do, but I would sooner be fishing with my secret catfish bait, but then I'm not really on a catfish trip. I want to, can I get a few hours sleep? And if I've got one fish, I'm a lucky type of trip. So I am spoiled for choice on the bait. I'm going to whack those guys out. And then it's food time for me. I've already been fishing here. And had some small fish in one of the other lakes over on Angler's Paradise main, main complex. So I guess the best thing I can do is give this a good pasting. And then I can sit back and relax. Where I wanted to get right in that little bay, but unfortunately, the lead's a little bit short. It doesn't hurt to spray them around, I found. They come out and uh, poke around. I've got half of them in the grass. You might be able to see a bit of a bay cut back in there. That looks good, but of course I'm close to the lilies. So put the right hand right there, and I'll go just past the point there. I don't want to go, that's good. I don't want to go right too tight to the point, because once it gets dark, you're going to have problems, aren't you? I think it's best to do small amounts of boily, somebody tell me. And it's good to me. Nothing yet boys, it's that time, food time. Now this is the total responsibility of one of the members of our awesome army. It's totally on his shoulders if this doesn't work. He said, Graham, I'm sick of seeing <laughs> spaghetti bolognese. What you want to do, get yourself Heinz big chunky vegetable soup. So the wife's got beef and vegetable, whatever. Put the soup into the saucepan. This is sort of a cookery program, isn't it? Anything that comes out of the tin is fine by me. It will be chunky. Oh, that's good. Then, what he says do is get some cooked chicken breast slices. Ziggy and sweet. Let's get reading glasses. <laughs> Selected chicken breast in a sweet chilli marinade with a hint of lime. Eat hot or cold. Now he didn't mention chilli in soup. <laughs> I've never heard that before. But he said, if I get some, same thing, chicken strips. Wow, some chilli on that. Scissor these up with these filthy scissors. You can't beat a good bit of bacteria. We all need a bit of bacteria now and then. There we go. No runs, no runs, please. Cut it up. Put it in with the soup. And then you mop it up and eat it with, wait for this, a nice dry cob. Cob is bread. Is that pan in French? Pan? Oh, it's a French cooking now. Well, I cut my freaking finger off. 
suppose it tastes all right. I could have some of that for breakfast actually, but I don't know, chilly in the morning. Chilly cold, yeah. There we go. Let's clean those scissors. I know catfish like chilli, I think. Somebody told me. Have a good piece of that. Stir it up with the spoon that I don't have. I don't need a screaming lamb, do I? Mike bought me these. I don't have any carpy wipey stuff. This is all Mike's gear. But it's all handy stuff, especially when you have to pay for it. I'll mix it all like this. Can you see this, guys? This is what this man told me. It's on our comments page. Have a look at it. This is a variation on a totally awesome belly buster. Onto the gas it goes. Gas mark, whatever. Let's hope it uh, doesn't fall over. Very suspect. Very suspect people. And then hopefully in about five, ten minutes, it's ready. The secret of these is keep it moving and uh, hopefully it doesn't fall over. It smells good though. I just wish that wind would lay down. I've actually got uh, one of these because I'm fed up with those plates. Mike got me a plate that matches a knife, fork, spoon and cutlery set. It's too small, it's shallow, doesn't have much of a flange. So really I figure the old fashioned army billy can is the way to go. And I've got to warm it up a little bit on top of uh, the saucepan so it's nice and warm. And of course I'm not entirely stupid, although most people would think so, because I did have the common sense to bring some backup liquid refreshment. It's going to be a good sunset. I might not catch a fish, but I'm going to get a nice sunset and I'm going to toast it with a beer, a sundowner. Now I've got to get something downer my tummy. I think that's nearly ready. So to the gentleman that so kindly commented on telling me what is going to be a first class meal. We'll see what this comes out like. There we go, people. Looks good to me. Plenty of juice. I see why he says you need a piece of bread to mop it up with. I didn't actually tell you that when I was, <laughs> when I was unrolling the, uh, the bivvy here, I thought, whack, I do, that's some smell in there. And I know I sort of dusted it out, I thought I did. <laughs> There's a squashed frog in there, quite a big one, might even a bit of toad. Well, I've threw it in the water. I should have, A, filmed it and got a, a viral video on YouTube, and B, I should have popped them in here, shouldn't I? So I've got beef, chicken, soup, vegetables, chilli, and I could have had frog. So ox taily taste about the soup. Mmm. Has a sort of lively burnt tongue feel to it. Mm. Guys, look it up on our comments page on the last Carpy Wapi film I did. Hines, vegetable soup, chunky soup, cut up some chicken that's pre-cooked in it, and mop up with bread. Job done. Mm. Just like a carp swirl. Guys, I'm on. Halfway through the soup. I don't know what I've got here. Don't feel very big fish, but soup nearly went everywhere. I've got some catfish shake about it. No, it's a car. Well, 
I'm sorry you didn't get much of this, I'll show it to you on the mat. Oh, there it is. The most deadly boiling known to man. The old Pacific tuna. Wow, that was a result. Oh, my GoPro's uh, camera's battery's gone. I have to get Xenia to charge that for me. Double figure fish. In case I don't get another chance to show you. There it is. Wow, that was a result. The lens is filthy, I can't help it. Wow, that was a major, major result. You screamed off on that third spoonful of soup. I find it strange because I've, I've got just as much bait in the right hand bay and the right hand bay is where I really thought I was going to get a take. I'm just getting little short beeps there. But the left hand island part, I've lost another carp hooked up there, hook pulled on that, can't help it, I couldn't even get the camera on. I don't know. There's been movement, bubbles, I think there's actually two or three fish over there. I've pounded it with a load more bait, I've got another bunch here of that spicy tuna and whatever the other one was, fruity tuna, they're both gonna go out um, before it gets dark. Yeah, there's fish moving there now. I don't know, it's very shallow out of there. I didn't plumb it or anything, but it's gonna be a bit of a pain when it gets dark trying to see that. Got a little head torch and I've got my camera light, but the camera light has got a diffuser on it, so it throws a light all over the place, <clears throat> a wide angle. And I've had a couple of real absolute bang Nothing. It's almost like they're lion bites out there. I've got a feeling there might be a chance. Oh, I just put some bread out there. The last bits of crust before it gets dark. I've just looked up, they're gone, and I've just seen a little ring there. Whether they're small fish or not, I don't know. I'm hopeful now. I've lost one, landed one. And I'm seeing fish right under the tree there, but it's too tight for me to cast to. I've got to be honest, guys, I feel another one. It's going to be freezing tonight. I feel another one coming. Well, it doesn't look it with this uh, low light camera, but it's getting dusk now. Sun's gone. I'll just kick the tripod down. There's fish moving over my baited area on the left. And I'm just getting real short. They've got to be lion bites on the right. So I fully expect one of these to crank off before dark. I'm not sure about the moon up there. That's going to be going down. It's in the first crescent. It's not uh, in the first quarter yet. It's just coming on. So it tells me the tides are getting smaller. If I was sea fishing, which I'm not. The other guy's just standing over there, must be one, two, three, four, five, six. Might be seven, there's certainly six on there catfishing and carping. Nothing I've heard of, of nothing, you know, no splashing, no netting, all standing around, sitting around, texting like everybody else. Set me, mine switched off. I'll give it another 15, 20 minutes just for dust so we can put some more bait out, probably in that side as well, but I'm not getting the bites there, so I'm getting the bites over this side. So I figure that's probably where they're eating more there. But we'll have to wait and see anyway.
well. One little beep on the right hand one, that's it. So, 10.30 I've had the big bait up. I'm trying to get a few zeds, I think I've got to try and uh, get a few zeds. They're taking floating crust up the side here, but I'm not rigged up for that. So have a go at that probably in the morning. Depends whether I get up at dawn or whenever I get up. I feel one's going to kick off at night. So quiet, unbelievably quiet. Yeah, one beat, that's all I get. Just one. Yeah, same word. It's just so quiet, it's unbelievable. The wind has laid down and it gets so quiet, you can almost, hit, well I can, I can hear whistling in the ears. No, it's not the wife 250 miles away, away. it's actually is it tinnitus you get. Well, you hear that, wee, and you hear think, is somebody answering that phone? Who's at the door? Nobody. It's called age, Graham. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Hello? That's another junk call again. <laughs> More junk calls. Right. I might join you people in the land of Nod, or I might join you with a fish on the end of the line. Where's the news update, guys? It's like... Quarter past three in the morning. Nothing has happened. Must have had a couple of hours sleep, I suppose, or something. Very quiet on the other lake, on the cat lake. I've not heard anything go off. I've not heard any voices. Whooping and hollering, nothing. No voices. But I had two casts out there. They're really, really bang on casts. So I've left them, if that makes sense. Because I thought I'll never get as close as, you know, to the edges in the dark. So I've left them. Nothing. And now I'm worrying that I've got too close. But because I've cast that over the other side, if you like, of the baited area, I'm just still concerned that I'm not getting line bites. So, a few fish splashing. Anyway, that's the update. I'm going to recast both of those. It's just barely, barely getting light. And then I can uh, hopefully grab a couple of hours sleep if it's not going to kick off, which it doesn't look like it's going to. Covered in dew out there. Right. One more cast out, I think, and then I'll try and get a few, uh, a couple of hours sleep or something. Well, the carp and cat lake uh, looks absolutely idyllic there. As does this one, but nothing's happening. And I th think there's too much happening over there.
guys, I'm fighting, I'm on. Fighting with the camera. I don't know what you're gonna get. Bit bigger than I thought. It's a nice mark to uh, mirror. Well, a bit early in the morning, but that's a funny hearing. He's probably been through the, the wars. Got a couple of scales off it. Wow, well, that woke me up. Five o'clock alarm call. Game going. It's not the weirdest fight ever. This is a strange one. <sighs> but we got him. Come on, come on. Just a quick one. So Angler's Paradise, it's a vast complex, no question of that, and they provide accommodation should you so wish it. 
of a pretty good standard. I have stated them many, many years ago. So you've got a choice there. You can get in touch with Xenia. But what they have got is a really cool bar, sort of African theme to it, with lots of stuff that's been collected over the years. A lot of big game fish there, cast, selfish, and obviously that's of an interest to me because I used to do lots and lots of this stuff. Marlin fish in there, some big ones as well. You can't say, maybe one of the biggest collections, you know, I would think in the UK. I don't know, but I think it might be. Tarpon, yellowfin tuna, just zooming in there. Barracuda, if you want to check out some teeth, forget the pike, look at the barracuda. That one looks like it might be a skin cast rather than a fiberglass cast of a fiberglass of a poor beagle shark. This one looks like a thresher shark. <clears throat> I'm going to say it might be a it might be a skin mount. I don't know on that or um, you know could be a fiberglass. A nice glass case in there. Loads of different shells in there. But check out the great white shark. And this is a real real great white shark jaws as per. The Jaws film, remember that scene? And those sort of two inch long upper uh, jaw teeth are in fact the correct size. But what I was impressed with was this pike. Look at the belly of that. Now I know a little bit about taxi derby, so I know you can make them look bigger. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, this one was way, not one of those all estimated, measured and whatever guesstimated things. And you'll see in a second what the actual weight was of this one. 1972 October the 21st wow 48 pounds 12 ounces how I'd like to catch one that size but I have my own claim to fame if you look at it in this collection down there at Angler's Paradise yes indeedy a skin mounted pompano that I had done and put in a suitcase I wrapped it up because I used to collect loads of fish don't get me wrong I, used to, I got rid of them all but I'll buy a few and there it says a pompano can't be many of these that have been mounted as a skin mount and it's, and it's gilt edge writing two pounds. Graham Pullen, Bermuda. Caught off the shore on, I think that was Bread Flake, that one. And you can check out the date there, July 1980, when I was doing a lot of foreign fishing. Here's another foreign fish that I've caught as well. Not this particular one, but it's called a dog tooth tuna with a serious amount of dentistry. They generally catch on quite... Um, Deeper water, Seychelles is an excellent place, Mauritius, those sort of places in the Indian Ocean. Short bill spearfish, I've caught those as well. And this is some weird thing. That's got to be a skin mount, surely. I don't even know what it is. Is it, is it a taupe? I've, <laughs> I've never caught a taupe that looks like that. And of course you do have freshwater fish, because that's what Angler's Paradise is all about, freshwater fishing. A gold morph of five pounds back in 1990. And they've got a lot of uh, other different fish. Look, gold morph 815, that's virtually a spit in the throat from, from nine pounds. Nice shaped fish, nice proportion fish. Here is a tiger fish. Now, the biggest I ever saw was by the guy who used to do my skin, pound, skin mounts, was a 26 pound Goliath tiger fish. I've no idea about that one. I don't think that's 26 pounds. Here we go with a rooster fish. I've caught many of those in the Pacific Ocean, inshore fishing, plenty of rooster fish. Great species, they're a member of the Jack family. So there you have a bar with God knows what's up there. Skin mounts looks like tigers, who knows what's up there, crocodiles. It's quite a collection.